Today, you are going to learn everything you need to know about the Moza Aircross 2 gimbal. We'll unbox it, set it up, balance it, go through some specs, learn some tips and tricks, see some real life footage shot on the Moza Aircross 2, and review it so you can be up and shooting in no time. You can skip ahead to the section that you need by clicking on the time code in the description below. The Moza Aircross 2 is extremely affordable and it adds a ton of production value to your videos. You might be wondering what the difference is between the Moza Aircross 2 and the Moza Air 2. The Moza Aircross 2 is designed for slightly smaller mirrorless cameras. It weighs about one kilogram and can support payloads between 300 grams and 3.2 kilograms. The Moza Air 2 in comparison supports payloads up to 4.2 kilograms. I'm gonna be testing it today with my Sony a6500 with a 24 through 105 f4 Sony G Master lens. The a6500 body weighs 453 grams and this lens weighs 653 grams for a combined total of 1,116 grams or about 35% of the max advertised payload of the Moza Aircross 2 gimbal. All right, so let's jump right into it and unbox the Moza Aircross 2. The first thing you have inside is the gimbal itself. Then I'm going to take out the tripod and attach it to it straight away. Then I'm going to pop out the battery and get this thing charging right away. It takes about two and a half hours to fully charge from my experience and don't forget to remove the plastic strip that's on top here. You then have the Manfrotto quick release plate. You have the quick release base plate. Then comes the L bracket. You then have the phone holder, which you can attach to the top of the camera. Although I don't really like to use this because it puts a lot of top weight onto your camera and it makes it pretty difficult to actually balance the gimbal. You have an Arca Swiss base plate. You have a small little toolbox with all of the cables that you might need. And in theory, you should be able to connect your Sony a6500 to the gimbal and control the camera through the gimbal. However, after multiple attempts of doing this, I spent probably an hour trying to figure it out, I could not control my Sony a6500 through the Moza Aircross 2. If anyone knows how to do it, please leave a comment below. Um, I haven't seen any instructions from Moza on how to actually control the camera from the gimbal. Okay, so the first step is to take your gimbal, take the battery, make sure that it's fully charged and that you've removed the plastic safety strip and then you insert it like this. Then we're gonna take our Manfrotto base plate and attach it to the bottom of the camera. So let me just move this out of the way here. And the easiest way to do this is to flip your camera upside down. Make sure the follow focus support rod is facing towards the front of the camera. So if I have my camera upside down like this, with the lens pointing that way, I'm going to apply it like so. Try to get the base plate centered. And I always like to use a coin to tighten it as much as I can. Now we'll set the camera aside for one second. We're gonna take the Manfrotto quick release base plate and the L bracket. So we're gonna take the long side of the L bracket with the short side facing my right hand, your left, and we're gonna take the screw of the base plate facing away from the long arm and we're gonna set it right on top like that. If you are having trouble moving this screw that's in the bottom of this base plate, you just need to tighten it clockwise and then it'll pop up and then you can freely slide it. So I'm gonna about center this. Again, I'm gonna take this screw and make sure it's facing away from the short side of the bracket. It's easier if you always turn it upside down. This is sort of an odd design because the screw won't fully let you push the bracket all the way in. It sort of obstructs moving this base plate. So the furthest you can go is about there. So that's where I have to tighten it. Okay, so once we have the quick release base plate attached to the long side of the L bracket, now we can take the camera, we can unscrew this screw here, and we just slide it in like so, and it has these little safety pins to make sure it doesn't slide out of place. Make sure you firmly tighten the screw, and we're gonna set this aside for one second. Now we take the gimbal. I'm gonna have the control panel facing me. You're going to unlock all of the latches on this gimbal so that the motors can rotate freely. So the first latch is here on your right side if you have the control panel facing you. Then you have a, another latch right hidden down here. So we're gonna 
open that one. And then we're gonna lock it so that it's perpendicular to the floor. We're gonna have this roll motor, the motor that's on the back, closest to me, facing me. And then I'm going to unlock the tilt motor. I'm gonna have it, again, perpendicular to the table. And you know you'll have it right if the text on the tilt motor is written facing up and if the text on this arm is written facing up. If this is written facing down, you have it the wrong way. Now I'm just gonna lock this pan motor at the bottom just to keep it secure. I'm going to unscrew the base plate mechanism on the back of the tilt motor. I'm going to pull the safety latch and I'm going to start from the top and slide it down like that and make sure it's in there securely and you wanna just tighten the screw. Now let me just take one step back and take this camera out because I wanna give you the secret of how to balance any gimbal. The secret to balancing any gimbal, including the Moza Aircross 2, is to find the center of gravity of this whole setup. So you wanna find the center of gravity for the lens, the base plate, uh, and the L bracket, and the camera body. So what you do is just put it in your hand and kinda of get a feel for it. Obviously the center of gravity is not right here because if I were to balance this on my finger and let go, the camera would fall down like so. The center of gravity is usually somewhere down the barrel of the lens and then about an inch or two outside of the sensor. So right about here is where the center of gravity is on this setup. I'm not gonna try to balance my $3,000 camera setup on one finger, but you can imagine that if I let go, I could do a pretty good job balancing it. Just get it, kind of get a feel for it and think about where the center of gravity is because what you need to do is get the center of gravity lined up with each of the axes of the motors. So I want the center of gravity to be in this axis, in this axis, and then right above this axis. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is balance the tilt motor. So I'm gonna face it like this way so you can see. So, as you can see, if I let go, the camera is falling forward. That means that the center of gravity is ahead of this axis. So now what I wanna do is move this slightly ever so back and then try again. So now I've moved it too far because if I let go, the camera falls that way. The center of gravity is now too far on this side of the axis. So what I'm gonna do is just make micro adjustments like so. And when I say micro adjustments, I mean micro adjustments. You wanna move just one hairline on the hash marks. And when you have it perfectly balanced, it should stay. And don't get frustrated with this. It will take a long time, your first time. But as you can see, we just got it. It's not very difficult. If you're having trouble, just take a breather, walk away from the table, and come back and try again in a few minutes. I found that that usually calms down my frustration. Now we're gonna face the camera with the lens shooting straight up. So again, as you can see, there's too much center of gravity on this side of the axis, it's falling that way. So what we need to do is move the camera this way. And we do that by loosening this screw here. I'm gonna push the camera that way. And now you can see I've done it too far, so I have to go back this way. And that's about right. You'll know that you have your gimbal perfectly balanced when you can point it in any direction and it stays there. I'm not gonna perfectly balance the gimbal in the interest of time, but you can imagine if I took my time, I would be able to have it stay right there in position. Next, we're going to balance the back motor. So I'm gonna unlock it and you can see if I let go, it's falling this way, meaning the center of gravity is too far past this axis. So I need to move the camera this way. So I'm just going to unscrew the top here and kind of get a feel for it in my hands. Still going that way too much. Making micro adjustments now, there. So now it's not falling to any side, so that means it's balanced in the middle. So now we're gonna balance the most difficult, which is the pan motor on the bottom. We're gonna unlock it, tilt it down. I'm gonna hold the gimbal perpendicular to the table, and you can see that if I let go, the camera is going this way, meaning I have to come back up, unscrew it, push it that way, and still too far. still too far, so it's really a balancing act. It takes quite a while. I'm not gonna get it perfect for this video, but that's about right. 
So now, the way that you can test to see if your gimbal is balanced is to point it in any direction and it should stay there. So that's actually very balanced and I did this very quickly. One thing I might add is that before you balance your gimbal, make sure you have your complete setup. So take off your lens cap. If you're gonna use a lens hood, put it on. If you're gonna have a microphone on your gimbal, put it on because you need the final weight and weight distribution of how you're gonna be using your camera setup when you balance it. I always like to leave the lens cap on just because sometimes when you're balancing, this thing can bounce around and you could crack your lens. So I always leave the lens cap on. A little tip that I like to give to people is once you have your lens and camera perfectly balanced, you can make a note of the hash marks so that if you need to come back and change your lens and then switch back to this lens again, I will have saved all of the hash marks to balance this particular setup. Before I go any further, I'd just like to say that if you're enjoying this video and would like to see more tutorials and reviews just like this, please click like, please click subscribe. And if you have any questions at all, leave them in the comment section below. I respond to every single question within 48 hours. Okay, so once you make sure that all of the motors are unlocked, you're gonna turn on the gimbal. And you're gonna do that by long holding the power button that's right here around the follow focus wheel. So you push it for about two seconds and the gimbal comes to life. And the first thing you're gonna see is a confusing screen that says tilt 50, roll 50, pan 50. Just ignore that for one second. What we're gonna do is press and long hold the center button to get to the menu. We're gonna go down to gimbal. We're gonna push the right button to enter that menu. We're gonna go to motor and push the right button. We're gonna to go to power and push the right button. And we're gonna to go to auto tune. We're gonna push auto tune and sit back for a second. And the gimbal is going to try to self tune itself for the appropriate weight of your camera setup. So after that's done, you're gonna see a series of numbers and it says that the tilt motor is at 92%, the roll motor is at 94%, and the pan motor is at 100%. Now I find this a little concerning because this camera setup, as I mentioned, is just over a thousand grams, just over one kilo, which is apparently only 35% of the max payload of this gimbal and the pan motor needs to be at hundred percent. Imagine if I had a camera setup that was around three kilos, which is what they advertise as the max payload. Can you imagine how hard these motors would have to work? Now I'm gonna take you through all of the different modes. So by default, the Moza Aircross 2 comes in pan follow mode, meaning if I pick up the gimbal and I pan to the left and I pan to the right, the camera will follow. You can see that if I tilt down or tilt up, the camera does not follow. That's because that access is locked. The tilt access is locked. And if I roll to the right or roll to the left, you can see that the camera does not follow. And that's because the roll access is locked. So if you look at your screen on the main screen where it says tilt, roll, and pan, that's what those letters mean. L is for locked and F is for follow. And the number is the speed. So tilt 50 L means that the tilt motor is locked and it's at 50%. So what I love about this gimbal is that you can use this dial wheel to quickly adjust any of the modes. You don't have to take out your phone and connect the app to the gimbal to control it. You can quickly do it with this button. So now if I tap the top of the scroll wheel, I just change tilt from lock to follow, meaning that if I tilt the camera down, it's gonna follow. If I tilt it up, it's gonna follow. Again, if I tap it one more time, I'm gonna lock that axis. So now if I tilt down and I tilt up, the camera does not follow. If I tap the down button, I'm going to lock the pan. So now if I pan left and pan right, the camera does not follow. When I have every single axis locked, no matter what I do to this gimbal, you can see that the camera is gonna stay facing forward. And that's the beauty of these gimbals is that it can adjust for all of your movements. If I tap the left button, I'm gonna go into roll follow. So now when I roll left, and I roll right, the camera follows. The max you can do this is 45 degrees. You can see that the gimbal sort of starts to freak out after I go past 45 degrees. And if you need it to go more than that, you can enter first person view. And you do that by triple tapping the left button. One, two, three. Now I'm in first person view mode. So even if I tilt more than 45 degrees, the camera is following. 
If I push, if I push the right button, I'm going in sport gear mode. And what that means is simply that the camera follows my movements more quickly. So if I quickly pan left and I quickly pan right, the camera follows much quicker. If I push the right button three times, one, two, three, the camera goes into inception mode. What that means is that I can point it forward and I can use the joystick to rotate the camera. So now to get back into the center position, I'm going to double tap the trigger and the camera goes center. If I triple tap the trigger, the camera turns to selfie mode. If you push the center button once and your camera is connected to the gimbal, it'll start recording video. If you push it twice, it'll take a photo. And if you long hold the center button, that's how you enter the menu of the gimbal. Now you will notice that there is a rod on the base plate of the gimbal. And what this is for is to mount a follow focus motor. I've never liked using the follow focus motor. It is extremely impractical. It is almost impossible to walk with a gimbal in one hand and look at this small monitor on the back and correctly pull focus. So I don't know anyone that uses the follow focus wheel to actually pull focus on a gimbal. It's sort of, to me, just like a nice sales gimmick that they add on these gimbals to try to outdo each other. But what I do like about this gimbal is that you can reassign the follow focus wheel to some other function. And what I like to do is have it assigned to the tilt motor so that if I rotate counterclockwise, it goes down. If I rotate clockwise, it goes up. And how you do that is by going to the menu. So I'm gonna press and hold the center button, go down to gimbal, go down to operation, go down to wheel, go down to function, and put it as tilt. And you can also adjust the sensitivity. I like to have it at 80, so that when I rotate the wheel, the camera tilts. So now that we have the gimbal set up, let's go outside and take a look at some real world footage. All right, we stepped out into the cold, dark Swedish winter to get some real life footage with the Moser Aircross 2. And I have a 24 through 105 lens on, and I have it cranked up to the 105 millimeter focal length so that way all of the shakes and jitters are exaggerated and I have my girlfriend slash assistant here to help and one thing to note is I have the optical image stabilization on the lens turned on and uh, yeah I'm going to aim right up at this backboard of the basketball court and walk slowly towards it so this is it walking. You can see it does a pretty good job. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a fast walk towards the backboard. So for this last one, I'm gonna run as fast as I can straight at Julia. And you can see that the gimbal actually drifts down while I run. I don't know why it's doing that. So one thing you'll notice about this gimbal is that it's very well built. It just feels very solid and sturdy, especially compared to the Zhiyun gimbals. So this gimbal does feel very well built and it's ergonomic with the trigger and the handle. And I love that the battery pops out quickly so that you can charge it in a hurry. You don't have to unscrew something and pop out the batteries. Another thing I noticed about the Moza Aircross 2 is that it's very noisy. So if you are recording audio for your video, then the noise of the motors might interfere with that, especially if you have a mic mounted right here on the gimbal and not on your subject. Overall, this gimbal is pretty impressive for its price, although I'm still a little bit out on the verdict. As you can see in some of the test footage, you do get shaky footage and it is quite loud. So I still think there is room for improvement, but if you're working on a budget, then this is a great gimbal for you. 